Christ is the reason, dear ones. I think I will keep this the shortest and perhaps the most simple recording I've done so far for the monastery because I just want to share something of myself with you and I don't want to turn it into anything theoretical. I want this to be simple, I want this to be true and truth is always revealed in simplicity and never hides in complex concepts and uh, thoughts. We've posted our video about the Saint Brandon the Navigator whose feast we shall soon celebrate this Tuesday and a number of you among whom Luke and Matt and uh, someone called the Celtic Vagabond have commented on the idea of authenticity and have linked authenticity with one version or another of a struggling or a painful experience of sorts. And I want to say just a few words about that because I feel responsible for having started that conversation. And yes, I need to confirm that from my own experience, and this is nothing more, this is not a talk about authenticity, this is not a theory about authenticity, this is just my experience sharing it with you. From this very limited human humble experience, I have learned as well that any attempt to be authentic will prove to be painful and it requires time and it requires great humility. Because every step you take in the right direction exposes more and more how far away one really is from one's true self. It feels very much like we are building ourselves up, we discover who we are, and then when you see who you are, what you see is so fake and so unreal that the only way forward is to take it down and start anew. And this process of building yourself up, discovering who you are, and then having to let go is a process of you are burying yourself, you are mourning over a version of yourself, but you have to keep on going and you have to remain humble while not despairing in order to progress in this process. It will frequently feel like a very dark place to be. It will frequently feel like living in the shadows, but we all know Christ tells us that the only way we can grow, the only way a human being can become more himself or herself is by rotting, just like that seed. There is no way a beautiful flower will come out of a seed unless that seed rots in the darkness of the ground until the right time comes for its flower to be shown. And the same applies with us. We must go through this process of recurrent discovery of who we think we are, followed by a recurrent discovery that in fact even that true self we've discovered is still false, still fake, leading to a recurrent process of endless burials, endless mourning of what we thought was our true self, but we must go through this process in order to get increasingly closer to who we are. It is only in the ground that seeds rot, and it is only by keeping ourselves in the ground that we can flower into who we truly are. There's no escape from this. You can think of it in terms of a seed rotting. You can think of it in terms of keeping oneself on the cross until the time of the resurrection. You can think of it in so many ways, but ultimately all of these parables, all these examples point to a very simple reality. The way to life is through death. The way to one's true self is through a sequence of repetitive deaths of who we thought we were. It is humiliating and humbling. It is painful. 
but it is the only way to life. I want to say just one more thing, because I don't want you to misunderstand me. I don't want you to think that I am encouraging you to just live your life, to just be who you are in the sense of not changing. What I am trying to say is that your true self, like my true self, like the selves of every human being that were ever created, are so much more beautiful, so much deeper than our sinful selves. And yes, it does take accepting who you are, it does take accepting your weakness and accepting your sin, accepting who that sin has turned you into, because that is the foundation that will carry you forward. You are a sinful man or a sinful woman. You cannot pretend that you are not that man or that woman. Because if you pretend that you are something you are not, then your prayer and your humility and your mourning for yourself as you move forward, all of that will be fake as well. You are who you are with your sins and your failures and your weaknesses. And you have to accept that this is who you are. But accepting that this is who you are doesn't mean that this is where you should stay for the rest of your life doesn't mean that there is no place for you to move forward. It simply means that you found this journey, this process of your becoming on the stone, on the true foundation of one's humility and true understanding of who one is at that given moment. But in the long run, in the very long run, in the journey that will lead you into the kingdom. The hope, the prayer, is that God will lead you to who you are outside your sin, outside your failure. You must acknowledge who you are. You must embrace who you are, because only in that way your prayer will be your own. Only then this journey of moving forward will have an effect. We all go through that, and that is why it is painful, because you have to accept on the one hand that you are a sinner, and this is who you are. You, you can't pretend you are someone else. And at the same time, you have to let go of this self. It is like living in a constant process of becoming, never really being someone stable, someone unshakable. But the reality is just that, that we are never unshakable. We are never beyond change while we are here. We begin from the sinful self we are today and we slowly progress. The deeper your humility, the deeper your self-knowledge, the more you will progress into who you truly are, and Christ will get you out of your sin. Christ will get you out of yourself and will reveal to you who you are. And then your prayer will truly be your own, and your love for yourself and for the world and for Christ, that love will truly be your own, and your fears and your hopes and your life and the moment of your death, the experience of one's death, will be your own. How dreadful to think that most of us go through everything, including loving and including dying, without owning these feelings, without owning these experiences, without them being truly our own. Love who you are in this moment. Accept who you are in this moment. Embrace your sinful self in this moment. But at the same time, remain perfectly aware that you must outgrow yourself spiritually. That you must die to your sin. That you must bury this sinful self so that you will become that seed who will rot and give forth wonderful, wonderful flowers. 
May Christ help all of us grow into who we are. Because if you become yourself, then I am growing. I am becoming myself through you. We are one in him. And if one of us makes it into the kingdom, then all of us have a chance to be there. May God bless us all. Christ is reason, dear ones.